Okay, in this video, I'd like to talk about the quantum numbers. So there are very various quantum numbers, and I'm going to discuss in this video how they all fit together and how they all give, their, we'll say, their physical meanings as well. So the first one I'd like to introduce is n. n is an integer, and it's called the principal quantum number. And this gives you your energy levels. All right. Now, for those who've done a small bit of quantum mechanics or quantum physics, they will have solved things like a, a, a particle in a potential well. Okay, and if you haven't solved it, that's okay. But a potential well basically is where there is no there is no potential energy inside, we'll say, an area, and outside the area, the potential energy is infinite. And due to wave particle duality, the the uh, We'll say the particle inside it can be thought of having a wave function, which I'm not going to go into. I've done that in previous lectures, but we'll say a wave exists somewhere in, inside the um, somewhere inside the box like that, and basically it, it, it works out that the energy levels are based on an integer. So you might get the energy levels. I'll rewrite that. You might get energy levels looking something like this. It might look like n squared, pi squared, h squared over um, I don't know the mass times I don't know. Let's say 72 point of the matter here is that the energy is dependent on what level you're at or what number you're at. So you see each, like if I put in 1, I'm getting a certain energy level. If I put in 2, I'm getting a bigger energy level and so on. So they call this the principal quantum number. All right, and it came from solving the Schrodinger equation to get the wave functions of the, uh, the, wave functions of the particles. The next thing we're going to talk about is the orbital angular momentum of quantum number. Okay? the orbital angular momentum quantum number. Now this one is a bit more difficult to understand. Well, it's not really actually. It's, it's not actually more difficult. Take that back. So, classically, we, we have always thought, or one of the models, we'll say, of the nucleus, or the atom and the nucleus, is that you have a, a nucleus that is very dense in the center, and then outside of you, these electrons orbiting on uh, orbiting on orbits, of course. Okay, so the Bohr model, for example, would have been the first one of these, these models. And anything moving in a circle, of course, has angular momentum. Now, I'm not saying that we're not really saying that the electron is moving as a sphere around the, the nucleus, but the mathematics of it are analogous to something moving as uh, in in a sphere, as if it's if it's a hard dot. Okay, so for that reason, we call it the orbital angular momentum quantum number. Now I need to be very need to be very um or very careful I suppose really to notice that n and l are quantum numbers. And I'll, I'll show you what isn't a quantum number in a moment. So the the all these orbital angular momentums right or momenta, momenta can add up and you'll eventually have a total angular momentum and we say l is the total orbital angular momentum. Now, this is not a quantum number. So in order to get the total angular momentum quantum number, or a total angular momentum, excuse me, you must use the orbital angular momentum quantum number, whereby the total angular momentum, and I'm going to draw it in red, the total angular momentum is equal to the square root of L times L plus 1. So we see that the quantum number of angular momentum or orbital angular momentum allows you to get the actual total orbital angular momentum. So the quantum number, the quantum number allows you to get a physical quantity. Next, oftentimes we want to look at a particular direction. What is the orbital momentum in a particular direction? So you might say, if this is your your orbit, you might say, well, what what's it in this direction, this direction, this direction, or this direction? So for that reason, we say it's l sub z. That's not saying it's in the z direction, as in that there are three spatial directions. We're not, we're not looking at it like that. We're saying it can be anywhere we like, and we, we can just move around our axis and pick what the, the z component of our orbital momentum is. And this is just basically a way of finding out the orbital momentum in a particular direction. And for that reason, we call L sub z the total, we'll say, actually, I'll rewrite that as the, we'll say, the z component or a component. of total orbital angular momentum. 
So that's only a component of it. And how I get this, oh by the way, what I should have said is, yes, total orbital angular momentum is the square root of LL plus 1, but it's times h bar Planck's constant over 2 pi. So this gives the amount of Planck's constant over 2 pi that we're using, or h bar we're using. Similarly, the L sub z component is very straightforward. Alright, so the L, -Z L sub z component is just equal to um, a quantity called m sub L times h bar. Alright, so we can say that the, 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 the component of the total orbital angular momentum in any particular direction is equal to another quantum number in units of h bar. So the next thing we need to do is to find this, this m sub l, this, this magnetic quantum number. So I'm going to define m sub l is equal to the magnetic quantum number. Now why is it the magnetic quantum number? Well, that's something I'm not going to get into in this video. But just accept that, that for reasons to do with mathematics and so on, that the, it's, it's, we, we call it the magnetic quantum number. So we can say the magnetic quantum number allows you to get the, a component of the total orbital angular momentum in any particular direction by multiplying the m sub l times h bar. And your, your total orbital angular momentum is found by multiplying the square root of l plus 1 times h bar, where l l plus 1, or l, excuse me, is your orbital angular momentum quantum number. All right? The second last thing I'd like to do is talk about spin. Okay, spin. So spin, we give the uh, we give just m sub s as the spin quantum number. And I'll talk about what spin is now in a moment. But once again, you're going to have a total. I'm going to say actually, I'll put that. I'll type this capital S is the total spin angular momentum. Now, what does this mean? What is spin? Well, you can think, if you think of an electron as a hard sphere, okay, so there's your nucleus and your, there's your electron orbiting around your nucleus. And you might say, well, the, the electron is itself orbiting around itself and it's also orbiting around the, nu the nucleus. It's like the, the fact that the Earth orbits on its own axis but at the same time orbits around the Sun. Now the thing is that we're not saying that the, the, that the electron actually does this, but what we are saying is that the mathematics of it are very much like um, they're very very similar to the mathematics, we'll say, describing the fact that the Earth is spinning on its own axis and going around the Sun at the same time. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I think it, it, it might be useful to you to watch my video called Scientific Models. That might help you to understand this or give you an insight into it. So basically, the mathematics suggests that the electron orbiting on its own axis uh, looks something like something spinning, so we call it spin. And its total angular momentum, this total spin angular momentum, is related to the magnetic spin quantum, or the spin quantum number, m sub s is the spin quantum number. Alright? And the spin quantum number, believe it or not, the spin quantum number is uh, l sub s, or no, that's, that's not l sub s, excuse me, s is equal to the square root of s outside of uh, m sub s outside of m sub s plus 1 in units of h bar okay so we can see it's very similar to our description here all right so it's s outside of s plus 1 in unit of h in units of h bar and in general they are the four quantum numbers and the four the we'll say the four quantum numbers and the two angular momenta that we would talk about the last one is the total angular momentum, okay? And I'm going to say that J is our total angular momentum. Total angular momentum. Notice this is a capital J. So you might say to yourself, well, does this imply that we have a, a total angular momentum quantum number? And the answer is we do. And we have a total angular momentum quantum number. This is the um, total angular momentum quantum number. All right. And I'm going to give you one guess as to what the value of capital J is. Well, J, capital J, is equal to the square root of J outside of J plus 1 in units of h bar. All right. 
So let's just go back over this. I have one more thing to say after this, okay, but I'll talk about that in a moment. So what we're saying here is that the, the principal quantum number n, that helps you get the energy levels, and these change, of course, these change, and uh, as n approaches infinity, you're getting different energy levels, okay? And the L is the orbital angular momentum. It's analogous to, example, for example, the Earth orbiting around the Sun. It's that sort of thing. And the quantum number allows you to calculate the actual value for the orbital angular momentum. Where the orbital angular momentum is, is used by getting the square root of LL plus 1 and multiplying that by h bar. Similarly, we can get the, ang the orbital angular momentum in any particular direction. And the way we do this is multiplying it by a thing called the magnetic quantum number and getting that in units of h bar. So the magnetic quantum number is something which I'm not going to talk about really because I suppose that's, that's one of the more difficult, so m sub l. That's just another quantum number, it's no big deal. The next thing, of course, is we have the spin quantum number, which is m sub s. That's the spin quantum number. And that was, <coughs> excuse me, I was saying, spin is analogous to the fact that the Earth is rotating on its own axis and then going around the Sun. So you might say the Earth is spinning. So the mathematics of that is, is very similar to the mathematics of the electron. Um, it, one of the, one of the, we'll say, the degrees of freedom of the electron. And then we have the total angular momentum. This isn't just the orbital angular momentum, this is the total angular momentum, and it's found by getting the square root of jj plus 1 in units of h bar, where j, small j, is the total angular momentum quantum number. The last thing I'd like to do is show the relationship between all of these, okay, and see, uh, see what, how big each of these can be, or what values, we'll say, l can take on, and so on. So I'm going to tell you that, well, n is an integer, so n n can go up to infinity. That's the first thing. Now, in practice it doesn't do that, but n can be any number up to infinity, provided that it is an integer. Then your value for L, your orbital angular momentum quantum number, your orbital angular momentum quantum number can only go up to n minus 1. So it can be an integer value up to n minus 1. Alright? Um, and that's well, I suppose that, that's, that's the main thing there. Now, there is one other thing I'd like to do, just, just to show you a formula for, a thing called degeneracy. Degeneracy, basically, is when you have two wave functions which are completely separate, giving the same energy. And just the, the formula for degeneracy is either 2 times 2L plus 1 or 2J plus 1. Both of those are the same. But degeneracy, I've actually done a video on degeneracy if you want to look at that. I, I think I call it degeneracy and symmetry, in fact. Okay, so that's all I've got to say about that. I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.